One of the things that you know I've experienced with the red one is like uh, you know the cooling, and it looks like you have redesigned it. It looks like you know I see the I see that the top part here has a nice uh, kind of like uh, you know heat vent there. Uh, so yeah, could you tell us a little bit more about yeah. that? Yeah. Well, I mean, just as a as an overall picture, we've redesigned everything, right? When you think yeah. about the miraculous nature of this device, this is the camera, right? This is the module that holds the storage. This will change. This is now still CF. This will change to SSD. This is the grip that hit, in this configuration holds the battery. This is a full working shooting movie configuration for 5K images. And when you think about the 4K, 5K thing, you think, oh, well, maybe it's not that much more image area than the Red One, which is, of course, massive. The 5K image is over 60% more visual data than the 4K image. So it's just absolutely insane how much information you get. Um, and it's all packed into this little box that is really just an engineering marvel. No one that we know is anywhere close to this. So we've done a lot of thinking about how do we improve from our first gen product, which we're shooting here, to our second gen product, other than the small size. And part of it is a very smart cooling engine, right? So we wise up over time. Now the cold air comes in from the bottom in this fan assembly here, and it vents out the top. It's actually not very hot when you run it. It's actually quite, you can put your hand on here without any issue. But there is some heat that comes out. Um, when the camera's running, it makes some fan noise, obviously because it's so small, the fans need to run. But um, when you roll, it's completely quiet, like the Red One. Like, there's no noise going on in the Red Ones now as they're shooting. Um, and that's normal configuration. So the other thing that's great about it is there's like a, an internal external cavity system. Yeah. So even if it's wet or rough conditions, not, if, if anything gets in here, it's not actually affecting the electronics. There's actually sort of a, an inner core and outer shell that... Mm -hmm. pushes the cooling around. So wow, it's it's amazing. super sophisticated, super advanced. The the fans are user replaceable, right? Yes, I think these so, yeah. fans are actually user replaceable, that's correct. Wow. Probably read that on one of the forums mm -hmm. as we start to dribble out all the information. Yeah. Uh, because it's one of the most common things that you want to do when you maintain right. a camera right. is you want it to be in top working order. So we're just making things a little more user friendly. Yeah. Even though it's shrinking, it's actually getting right. more user friendly. That helps when, you know, we're like us, we're all the way in Vietnam. So sometimes, you know, we just bring some backup fans or something. Yeah, it's, nice it's, just... yeah it's pretty rough conditions. <laughs> we were out on the set a couple of days ago right. on a movie that you're working on. It's, mm -hmm. It was pretty intense. I, I probably got a good sweat going on just now <laughs> in here. Yeah. So um, thank you. And then so uh, number seven um, question mm -hmm. is, um, is uh, can you have uh, two onboard LCDs at the same time? You, you actually have three independent monitoring paths going on just on the brain system, right? And of course, we can add modules that give us a lot more. But just in this tiny configuration, we have the onboard touchscreen. And we also have an HDSDI and an HDMI output, right? Mm -hmm. So I can run three independent monitoring paths. And the really great thing about this is the DP monitor has all the information, right? You can go right. into the false color mode and see the different exposure modes and all that stuff. Right. But in the old days on a red one, the old days, <laughs> um, when you change that as the DP, everybody has to see that, right? Which is a little frustrating sometimes for the clients. In uh, lost the light. Should we just keep rolling? Uh... <laughs> We'll keep rolling. Oh, okay. good. I'm gonna be yeah. good. Provability on how good the MX sensor is. <laughs> Just keep rolling. It's fine. Okay. Um, so in this mode, while the DP or the the on the, the ACs are seeing all that information that's critical, right. the client gets to watch clean feed at 1080p or 2K right. out these ports. Mm -hmm. So gone are those days. I mean, everything is advanced, right? Mm -hmm. So just so you know, kind of yeah. where things are at. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Couple more questions, right? Yeah, definitely. I don't know how many, um, how many people are going to. So, hang just to clarify, you said uh, um, so if we add another module, obviously that'll add the. Yeah, there's a module with multiple mm -hmm. HDSDI outputs and multiple professional audio outputs. Right. There's a couple of little mini jacks here on the front. Oh, right. if you want to put a little mic on the, the small camera, but if you mm -hmm. need to go full on audio, then you grow the camera a little bit with a module. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, thank you. And then uh, our next uh, question, uh, number eight. What is the, um, and actually you answered this a little bit, what's the approximate megapixel um, that this shoots at? And you said 14. It's around 14 megapixels. Around 14 yeah. megapixels. Um, and, so uh, it's 5,000, a little over 5,000 lines. 5,000 uh, lines. Horizontal resolution. Yeah. And then um, some, uh, one, of the, one of our uh, you know, red user um, friends uh, asked another question, which was, um, you know how before we were shooting with the red one, it was uh, 4K, and then all of a sudden 4.5K mode came out? Mm -hmm. So uh, wishful thinking here, but is there a 5.5K mode? or? Well, well, in my world, I've learned never to say never. You okay. never know what might be around the next okay. corner with us, but there are certainly um, some level of restrictions on the pixel count. Okay. Today, the answer is 
This is a 5K device. I see. Um, which is just well beyond even what a Red One does. It right. puts HD cameras just to shame. I mean, it can't even compare, right? right. As to how big this image is. Right. So 5.5K, well, nah, not even worried about that. When yeah. you see how good 5K images look scaled to 4K for delivery, mm -hmm. It's not yeah. in the question anymore. Yeah. That's true. That's very true. Okay, so um, on to <clears throat> number nine. Um, for the, you know, uh, you know, what's intriguing about this is that for a lot of the photographers, um, they have a nice collection of, you know, Canon lenses. And so um, this is just incredible. It's okay, guys. Leave it dark. It's fine. Um, it's just incredible that, you know, um, that we can just put, you know, Canon lenses and, and somehow I'm just amazed at how the red can electronically talk to the lens. Right. Yeah, we know? built a, uh, a Canon mount, a Nikon mount, electronic pinout, Nikon mount, Canon mount, and of course, normal PL mount for cinema. And then we're also working on some red lenses that are electronic mm -hmm. and we'll have a red mount as well that will be an electronic mount. But we'll boot this up in a second and... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you saw the autofocus working, so you can yeah. tell people it, it yeah. definitely works. You know, yeah. you touch, we'll definitely uh, record autofocus a quick clip of the autofocus to, to show show yeah. it in action. And uh, so, as of right now, you um, what happens if you put a like a non Canon still lens? Then what happens? But so, it's a Canon mount. Yeah. Sure. So um, when I checked with the engineering team, what they told me was that the priority of engineering uh, for the calibration is the L series uh, mm -hmm. lenses, um, but they're working on Tamron and Sigma as well. And if you put a non-calibrated lens, it'll go into a default mode, so you'll still be able to use the autofocus. It just won't be quite as refined. Um, but you know, this is obviously a very popular zoom lens. Mm -hmm. This is actually one of your zoom lenses, the yeah. 24 to 70 Canon, and this is already calibrated and working um, yeah. appropriately. So right. it's not just for this type of lens. We're going to cover a, a wide spectrum right. of glass. So it's just a matter of time, you know, as, as lenses are being will be made. Supported. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just amazing. And just to let you all know. Um, I, I got to change the lens, obviously. I put my lens on it, and uh, it's a very robust, you know, very rugged mount, mm -hmm. you know, and it has a, a, a unique release to it, so that you know right. yeah, you, you have to press, and then twist. you have to press a button on there, and then you rotate the, you know, the collar, and it comes right off, and it's, you know, as usual with all red quality, it's pretty <laughs> it's good. It's extremely yeah. robust. Yeah. Okay. Final uh, question, right? Final question now. Um, so basically, uh, will um, Red Rocket support? How will that be for the Epic when right. it releases? Obviously, post is very, very critical with both the Red One and, of course, the upcoming Epic. So the team, uh, the technical teams are already working and have been working on getting the Red Rocket support for 5K files, working in the lab. We'll wow. make some announcements accordingly. The goal is to obviously have everything in tandem working for release so that you'll have Red Rocket support, which for those that don't know, uh, working with a red one camera without a red rocket is kind of like working with one hand tied behind your back. The, the rocket is really sort of the back half of the camera that's designed to handle everything in post in real time. It just makes the red really the easiest, simplest camera to work for in post production of any camera, regardless right. of the resolution. And of course, we have all these other wins mm -hmm. uh, beyond that. So I highly recommend it. That's not a sales pitch. I, I use it every day. I know you mm -hmm. do. I mean, that's yeah, just, definitely. You, you don't want to work without one. Yeah. So it'll it'll work with uh, with Epic Files as well. Well, um, I guess that wraps up our top ten questions. Uh, in a bit here, we're going to do. Oh, I'm we should. Sorry, well, no, I was saying, well, yeah, that wraps up the questions. Yeah. I know I've got to catch a flight in about ten yeah. minutes to Osaka. Ted has to go out, but we, you know, we <laughs> right, we're right. rolling, mm -hmm. and let's just. I don't know if you guys can see. Just do a little autofocus test there. Zoop, there it goes. So uh, basically, uh, maybe I you can... just autofocused on you right there. Okay, I'm t testing the autofocus right now. So you can see, and I've got a little moment here. We can touch you, and then we can. Your light went off on the phone, but we can oh, touch sorry, it sorry. again. I'll have to there it goes. Again. Okay, let's get it. Got the phone. Got you. Totally works. And when running, by the way, at 2500 ISO, I don't know how if you guys can see how clean that picture is, but I'm running at an f8. <laughs> <laughs> so let's change that because it's an auto iris lens, and we have control. See, I just popped it up there. There's a four five. That looks a little better. How's that? And there's our autofocus ability. Let's go to something closer. Let's try my laptop there. Focused on that. Yep, that works. And then let's go back to you and focus on you, and that works. All right, I gotta go catch a plane to Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, next Reducation is early December. You can go to reducation.net to find out some more info about it. We teach all kinds of great stuff about production and post, all about the red, and it's a, a really fun week. So I encourage people to come and check it out, reducation.net, and of course, red.com for all kinds of info about the red. We just launched a new website a few weeks ago, so check it out.
Thank you. Yeah, once again, uh, Tanasi Chan here with Ted in Vietnam. And uh, thank you, Ted, for coming. Sure. Oh, and by it's the way, amazing. for the Vietnam Tourist Board, Vietnam is the most, one of the most amazing countries I've ever been in. We took a little touring around, mm -hmm. and it, you can probably see it got a little suntan, and it was outrageous. Had some of the best food I've ever had, best people, just a ton of fun. So yeah. you picked a good place to live. <laughs> Thanks. All right. All right. Thank you. Off to Japan with the Epic. All right. Have fun, Ted. See you. <laughs>